Hi guys, Amy here again from Amy's Wears and today's video is all about quick and dirty coloring with your watercolor brush markers. So if you enjoy coloring videos then you may want to check this one out. To start I'm just going to show you some of the products that I'm using today. I have my Misty Stamping Platform, some Versafine Onyx Black Pigment Ink. This is a waterproof ink. I have some Bristol Smooth Paper and the 11 by 17 inch pad. I was actually able to cut four sheets of paper of this size that fit perfectly in my Misty with just one sheet of Bristol. And I'm going to use two stamp sets today. This adorable one from Journals for Life with these cutie little dinosaurs. And another stamp set from Simon Hurley Creates. And I chose these just because I thought they would be fun to use with the brush pens. And those are my Arteza water brush pens that I use in tandem with these colored pens here. So basically the draw here, these would be like your Zig Clean Color Markers. This is Arteza brand. And as you can see, I have full set syndrome. But honestly, you don't need this many because you can get a beautiful gradient with just one pen. But you'll see they have a brush tip and they are water based. And you can use them either with a watercolor brush and water or like I did with a water brush pen to kind of move the color around. Now to start off, I'm just going to use my Misty and stamp these images with the pigment ink just to kind of fill up the page. Um, as you know, I like to do multiple projects at once or batch things to have a lot ready to go for future projects. So that's kind of what I'm doing here. I'm just kind of placing them in a way that I'm going to fill up as much of that page as possible. And I don't have any coordinating dies, so it doesn't really matter if they're nestled kind of close in here. But as you can see, I didn't get a perfect impression, so that's the beauty of the Misty Stamping Platform, is you can stamp it as many times as you need to. So I'm just going to fill up the page with those. But as I was saying with this Bristol paper, this is a must-have with this process, because these brush pens, first of all, are going to require water, which kind of rules out a regular cardstock because if you try and apply that much water to a regular cardstock, first of all, the, the ink isn't going to move around and it can't hold up to the water. It's going to pill and possibly rip through. Now, you can do this technique with watercolor paper where it will absolutely be able to handle the water, but because it's kind of got a rough texture or a tooth to it, you can't really move the ink around before it already soaks into the paper because the paper is essentially doing its job and, you know, sucking in the water. So it's not ideal. It will work, but it's certainly not ideal. Now this Bristol Smooth, however, it's more like a cardstock, but it has almost like a coating on it that allows this type of marker to blend beautifully on top and it can actually hold quite a bit of water. So if you're going to use these Arteza brush pens or Zig color markers or anything in this kind of arena, I would definitely recommend Bristol Smooth Paper because it's really going to allow you to get the blend that you would want uh, with these type of markers. So as I mentioned, I have the full set which honestly I kind of regret getting because I use so few colors at a time. Um, I basically picked out some basic primary and secondary colors and a couple grays and a couple browns, which I showed you here. And then I have my water brush pens. Those are actually two of the same size. Um, I have multiple sets of those. I literally use them for everything. So. Um, but to start, as you can see, I'm literally just throwing down some color. These first little critters, I haven't sped up the video. I'm just showing it to you in real time so you can see how quickly I move. Um, first of all, this design, this adorable illustration is kind of sketchy and messy. So I felt it would be a perfect pairing with, with this style of coloring. Um, but in true... Amy fashion, I, I tend to want to rush through, to pro through the process and be able to create a lot um, in not a lot of time. So 
you can see I'm, I'm really not putting much thought into this. I'm just throwing down colors and then using the water brush pen to kind of pull the ink out and create that beautiful gradient. So I did all that with just one marker. Um, it does look a little bit flat, but as it dries back, it does have a really cool watercolor look to it. And as it dries a little bit, you can come back in and add more layers, just like you would regular watercolor. Here I'm showing you I went outside the lines. I find watercoloring to be very forgiving. You can just take this water brush and kind of go back over it to suck up the pigment that you laid down. Use a little paper towel and there you go. You can't even see it. So it works really well, especially if you come outside of the lines. It's not a big deal. So I'm just kind of working through these basic colors, filling in the design, kind of throwing down the ink where I think there might be a shadow. And then again, just taking the water brush pen to just pull out the pigment and kind of wash it over the image. There's really not much to it. Um, the little teeth and fine details on this, I'm not paying too much attention to just because they're so small. And if I need to, I can always come back in with my white gel pen and make it white again. Um, I did struggle a little bit as I was trying to color in the finer details with the water brush pen, like the spikes and the little round edges off the yellow dinosaur. Uh, I was thinking after the fact, this would be a perfect use for my massive gel pen collection. Um, I don't know if any of you guys saw those from Costco, but I got one for Christmas a few years ago and I don't always have a use for it, but I feel like those gel pens, even the little cute glittery ones would be a good use to fill in these little tiny details or really any fine liner pens or anything um, would probably be easier to color in those little details rather than trying to watercolor them in. But either way, I made it work. Now here I wanted to show you a different way you can use these pens. You can kind of throw down some of the pigment onto um, an acrylic block or if you have like a little piece of acetate or something like that. This will allow you to use it more like a traditional watercolor. You can see I'm squeezing some water from the brush pen and really just desaturating the color. I didn't want that full strength of pink. I wanted to come in with a lighter color. So that was the way that I created that look. So you could actually color the whole image this way if you're not comfortable going ink to paper or if you for some reason maybe stamp an image on the wrong type of paper like um, cardstock on accident which I've done or watercolor paper. This method will work a little bit better if you do use that type of paper just because you have a little bit more control and you don't really need to blend out as much as you would have to if you went directly from the marker to the paper, if that makes sense. So I have done that before when I've messed up and ac accidentally stamped on something other than Bristol but wanted to use these markers um, and I was able to make it work. So you just kind of work more in layers and, and then revert more to like a traditional watercolor method in that way. So I'm just going direct to paper with the little yellow spikes, trying to add some color in there um, and making his belly yellow. You can see I just do that one little scribble and then pull it out. You can get such a beautiful gradient with just one marker. That's one of my favorite things about these um, is not having to have multiple markers like you would with Copics where you need, you know, two, three, four different markers to create a a gradient or a blend, you can really create that look with the right type of paper and then just one of these markers. So they're still wet here, but you can see it's got such a nice sloppy watercolor look, which appeals to me and kind of lends itself to my style. So now I'm going to work on the cute little blue dinosaur here. And as you can see, I'm just scribbling in the color. Not much to it. And again, I'm still in real time here, so you can see how quickly I was able to color these little guys in. And this blue blended really nice. I, I'm fond of how that one turned out. So I'm just kind of putting it in certain areas, pulling it out with the water brush pens, and 
as you can see on my tips here, my water brush pens are very stained. And that's literally because I use them for everything. I even use them to seal my envelopes because, you know, COVID germs, nobody wants licked envelopes. So um, these work amazingly. I have them on my craft desk. I can seal up an envelope with this. Um, I just use them in so many ways. I even use them with my traditional pan watercolors from time to time. So the set of these from Arteza is a set of six and it's all different. Um, brush sizes and it's just, it's honestly one of the most used things in my craft room but even though they're stain stained it doesn't affect you know the outcome or anything like that so just working along putting in the color and again you can come in if you want to take the time and work in layers just like watercolors and really build up that contrast build up that blending um, I think it's at this point that I spot the trouble I don't know if you've been noticing it all along here, but look at this hot mess. <laughs> it wasn't dry. Oh, the plight of a lefty. Look at my hand. Anyway, I didn't take the time to let it dry. I didn't heat set it. Wouldn't recommend. I wasn't thinking about the fact that this is pigment ink and it takes longer to dry and it takes even longer to dry on Bristol because of that clear coating. So. Don't be like me. Take a moment to heat heat set it, or better yet, you could even use some clear embossing powder, and then you would create little wells and make it even easier to watercolor. So, pro tip, don't be like me. Um, use Bristol, use Versafine, but either let it sit for a while, or heat set it, or heat emboss it with some clear embossing. So, I cut off the, the casualty here on this piece of paper on my little smeared stamps. It was a sad day, but I cut them off and finished up the little blue dinosaur. And there you go. And they get even cuter as you let them dry naturally. Um, obviously you can heat set these, especially if you want to work in layers, but it doesn't take long. And I really like how watercolor looks when you just let it do its magic and let it dry naturally. So here, as you can see, I used another piece of paper and stamped these little critters again because they were a mess on the other one and I've sped it up now because you've seen the main process but I'm using a lot more of the neutrals on these I have the two different grays I'm starting off with the darker gray and dropping in the color and then I end up using the lighter gray for his muzzle and this looks like a little schnauzer I always end up coloring it like the schnauzer my parents had but the stamp is just too cute I love these little peekaboo stamps where you can just cut them out and put them on top of, you know, a sentiment strip or, you know, look like they're behind something. It's just, it's too cute. Anyway, I was able to add a little pop of color with the, the green collar here and it was a little flat. So I did come back in and colored some more in it and came back in with the gray again. I want to just add more contrast and shadow. So. Just dropping in the color, pulling it out with the water brush. And these water brush pens, you can, you know, squeeze out some water. You can, you know, just kind of let it flow out naturally. It's it's a bit of a learning curve, but honestly, they're, they're some of the best water brushes I've ever had. I've gotten other ones with different, you know, watercolor sets and things like that, and they tend to leak. And these Arteza water brush pens have just worked really well for me. So you can see again the watercolor being very forgiving. I came outside the line and was easily able to clean it up by just adding some water with that brush pen and sopping it up with the paper towel. And here I'm using the two different color browns. And then I took some of the pink and put it on the, the block again because I didn't want it full throttle pink. I wanted it, you know, desaturated. So. I'm just using that. It's kind of hard to see in the picture, but I use that to put in the little ears of the kitty and the bear. Just working my way through the images here. I kind of came outside the lines, so those water brush pens will really just suck up. If you have like a pool of water, it'll just suck it right back up and then you can just wipe it off on the paper towel and then move on your merry little way. 
Now here, I'm playing with fire again. I decided to turn it upside down because again, my left hand, you know, is gonna go in that wet bear and smear it all over again. Um, so I decided to color the fish upside down because otherwise I would ruin the bear. But here I'm just dropping in some red. And here I'm showing you the tip can go white. Occasionally it does come back. It's just if you apply it to a wet surface again, it may take the pigment out of the tip, but don't be alarmed, it will come back. It just takes a moment and then you can kind of come back in and apply another layer of color if you want, just to give it more dimension. And then super easy coloring on that little purple fish. I did next to nothing there. And then I used the lighter brown on this kitty as the main color. And then I wanted his snout and his little chest fuzz or whatever that is to be essentially white. So um, I didn't want to leave it pure white. I wanted to give it some shadowing. So I used the lighter gray just to drop in a little bit of dimension there. But as you can see, it's really, it's really sloppy. It's, if you're lazy like I am, um, this might be a good medium for you. If you don't always love coloring with alcohol markers, these brush pens might be an option for you. These function exactly like Zig's. They're much more affordable. Um, I have played with Zig's. I do find them very comparable. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I colored in all these in a very quick amount of time, and I hope you enjoyed my process. If you did, uh, please hit the thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel, and I appreciate you watching. Have a good day. Bye.